Hello there and welcome back. Today I'm going to do an actual uh, collection video just show you my Criterion collection. The reason for this is my, uh, I've only got two short videos this week. Next week I'm going to have like, two collaborations, one with Solitary Road and one with Two Idiots. This week I'm about short so I thought I'd do a Criterion collection. The, the one of the videos next week will be a bit, a bit longer than what I've got so far but I don't want to overdo it or have very little out so I'm doing a criterion collection hope that explains that I've been planning out some more videos for the upcoming weeks like certain seasons, I'm going to finish on my diploma season with a few films then an overall thing look at the rest of them that I haven't covered I should be covering some John Berman films so I've got some plans, it's just that at the moment it's, it's, it's hard getting started but I think you'll be pleased with what, what I'm going to do with Ronin and I think you would please what we've got for idiots because they're they should be fun. So I'm going to talk about my Criterion collection just now, and I'm going to start with the DVDs. I've got some Blu-rays which we'll see back there, but I'll show you them more detail later. But at the moment, these are the uh, DVDs. Start off, um, Sands of the Lambs. This is an old edition, and it's so old when you put it up on the screen it's just 4 to 3 shifted change of the ratio stuff because it's such an old um, DVD that the quality wise it's not great anymore it's more for having a collector's item rather than actually owning it for watching it um, the same goes for Robocop another one I own just basically for collection's sake I don't really I've got like various copies of Robocop I don't need it for anything else there's Insomnia, the original Insomnia, which I haven't watched yet. I got it recently. I'm looking forward to seeing that one. This is the one with Stellan Stalsgaard. Uh, I've seen the remake with Christopher Nolan did, which is enjoyable, but it's, you can tell there was... Um, it didn't quite click for me. I thought there was a better film in there, so hopefully that'll be the better film. Then there's the Brazil. I don't, I've got Brazil in Blu-ray and normal cop. I don't have it in Criterion in Blu-ray, but I've got the DVD where you get the making all of the Battle of Brazil, the original cut, which this disc doesn't work of the um, TV, another cut that the studios released. I've got the disc here but the disc doesn't work but it's a nice collector item anyway. So again it's an old-fashioned you know DVD so it's a bit of a problem. So here we go with work. I have the Night Porter I haven't seen this one, I got this one recently. There's some good places on Amazon you can buy uh, these um, DVDs that are pretty cheap. I mean, they're really. If you're looking for some obscure ones, you can get the DVDs pretty cheap because they're not upgraded to Blu ray and no one wants DVDs anymore, but you can pick them up if you want them for collector's item. Here's another one which I've got in Blu ray, but I've got this for collector's edition, really, is Life of Brian. Very good film. I still prefer the other one, uh, Holy Grail. We've got Sisters, which I have an arrow. This was, this was one of the first ones I bought from Criterion. This was a Region Zero. And it's one of the Palmer's early ones. It's a really good film. It's I've had that one for years and years, so it's like it's a it's one that's been with me for a long time. We have the Beastie Boys. Uh, collection where you get all the music videos because there were lots of uh, big directors doing music videos for them. Got them for a few pounds, that was quite impressive for me to get it. Mon Uncle, which is a uh, Jack's Tati movie, I have not watched it yet. I got it very recently, so that's why I haven't watched it. It's just a um, very recent buy. I got it just before Christmas, so I'll get around to it. We have Rashomon, which again I have on. Uh, Blu-ray, but it's good to have a Criterion DVD with the Criterion Extras. So I bought it for a collector's item rather than to have an amazing copy of it. George Washington, which is a David Gordon Green film. I have not watched this yet. It's another one I got recently. Hope I'll see it soon. But I got it just to see it and have a a look at it. Also, it's nice to see it in Criterion. I've got Hearts and Minds, the documentary of Vietnam. Another one I haven't seen, another one I bought recently, so, um, so there was quite a lot of them out recently. Another one I've got, Life of Death, Connor Black, one of my favourite films. I've got it in Blu-ray, 
I just got this one to have a Criterion version of it as well. Even with DVD. I'm such a fan of that film. Okay, now we have a film which I've got various copies of now it seems. Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. I've got a Criterion here. I used to have the Blu-ray but I upgraded to the Arrow Blu-ray which I've given my older Blu-ray away. But this is a nice addition. You get a lot of nice extras on it which are very different from the Arrow one so you get a lot of different elements in it. It's a very good film. Very underrated. I did a video all about Gilliam films recently so go watch that. It covers Fear and Loathing. Um, Coupe de Grasse. Um, I went and bought because I heard it was an interesting follow up to Tin uh, Drum. I have not watched it yet, but it's one of the ones I want to see. So I guess why I bought it. It was a blind buy, hoping for the best. Stan Brackage Anthology by Brackage. Um, I saw some of these on the film school, but I have not watched them for years. But I guess I got them to watch them again and see them and. Um, I'll have to watch them. It's just uh, laziness, really. Shizopolis, which I did a video on, it's a good addition. You get some nice extras. But the film itself is terrific. I'm very happy to have this one. And Die of a Country Priest, another film which I've done a video on. Another great film. It needs to have a Blu-ray at some point. It's a wonderful, wonderful experience, but it really needs a proper edition. This is a film here which I've got multiple copies of. It's Fritz Lang's Testament Dr. Mabusi. I've got this on Eureka DVD and I have three box set with other Mabusi films. I've got it in Blu-ray I've got in this one. In this one you actually get the French and the German versions. So each version I've got of this film has different extras which is why I keep them. Plus I love the film. I'm a massive Fritz Lang fan. This is one of the ones I had for years. Slacker. Uh, Slacker you get the film, you also get lots of extra like, commentaries, you also get like this film we made before this um, it's called It's Impossible to Learn to Plough by Reading Books which is a really cool interesting film made before Slack up, it's very much um, following people around, it's it's kind of like Slacker but more depressing and darker and it's just, it's a very interesting film though, it's uh, very much like Linklater but it's a very much darker version of Linklater. It's really worth seeing. Right. right, now we have another Golden Oldie video drum, which I have had for years. You get commented with Cronenberg, James Wood, so you get a lot of nice extras. And of course, as anyone's ever seen this edition knows, you get a video. It's one of my pride and joys. Even though I've got a video drum on Arrow Blu-ray, I'm not going to read that one. That's such a good edition. Now we have Hoop Dreams, which is a wonderful documentary all about these uh, kids in um, a deprived area in Chicago who have to, uh, because of black, they have to, um, because of good, the, Basketball, that's the only way out of the ghettos. It's, it's pressures that put on them to try and succeed, really. This is one, um, Mr. Arcadin. This one I can blame Slaughter running for, because he's the one he covered it and then let me know it existed. So you get various versions of it. You also get a book, no one knows who wrote it. A, it's a novelization apparently. You get various versions, you get documentaries, you get commentaries, all of it, confidential report, Mr. Arcadden. This is probably my least favourite Austin Wells film, but since I'm an Austin Wells fan, I still bought this thing for a fortune. Um, so I want to say thank you to Sorty Road and or blame him. It's a bit of both, really. Viridiana, of course, I've been well film. I've had this one for years too. This one was, I bought this one to been well. I'm old enough to been well, but this one I first discovered been well in the 2000s, so this one of the ones I bought from America and popped a fortune for at the time. We have Dazed and Confused. I've got Dazed and Confused in Blu-ray, so I've got a good Blu-ray copy, but this one you get a lot of extras and commentaries and documentary stuff. The Blu-ray from Criteria is like 25 quid, so I'm not, I don't want really to spend 25 quid yet on it. I'll probably get it eventually because I'm a sucker, but not quite yet. Finally we have Traffic, 
which I also have in Blu-ray but the Blu-ray I've got uh, doesn't have a box so that I just this is the one with the box and so Steven Soderbergh's terrific um, film The Drug Trade it's not as good as the original TV miniseries but it's still very good okay that's my DVDs okay we're now on to the Blu-rays Criterion have been releasing films on Blu-ray in the UK for a while they didn't really release films in the UK on DVD, you had to buy them from overseas but now with Blu-ray they've actually been selling them at least some of their titles have come over here so I'll start with the big box sets because there's two of them I've got that are quite expensive and quite spectacular first one is Godzilla Godzilla box set you've probably seen this through a lot of collection videos you get a ton of these things you get great pictures you get all the discs here it's wonderful I've done a video on them um, it's amazing I mean Godzilla is an amazing box set I've seen them all the films I'll probably watch them again pretty soon Godzilla's wonderful okay next we have the Bergman set which if you've seen Salty Ronin's video you've seen a the unboxing um, you get all these different discs on it uh, Ronin and I are going to do some for a channel, some films for a channel you also get a big booklet just give me a second here and I'll get the booklet out at some point because it's kind of awkward so yeah you get a booklet as well with various things in it, various covering all the films so it's quite an epic so um, look forward to that coming soon and on my channel with uh, Sultry Rodin we've already planned out what the first one is so it will be coming soon but not for a few weeks yet but the, there is a plan in place and if we're late well we're going to be late but we do have a plan now Right, now on to the, just the titles themselves Start off with, with Terence Malick who is one of my favourite directors We have Badlands Which is a film I bought multiple times We have Days of Heaven, this one came from America um, Quite a lot of these films came from America Because there's just certain titles you can't buy over here, they're just not released over here So you have to just buy them an import, so that can be expensive at times Another import the New World, where you get like three different copies of the film, three different versions, some nice documentaries. I mean, there's nice documentaries in there too as well, but this is the one where there's lots of stuff on it. We have um, the Tree of Life, where you get the two different cuts. You get the, the theatrical cut and a special cut, which is longer, which I haven't watched yet, which I should have, because I'm meant to be doing the Malik season and I've been lazy, and I will, but I will get to it, don't worry. Now we're going to Austin Wells, who's one of my other favourite directors. Um, his stuff's amazing, so anything I can do to get any of this film in criterion, I will do. We have Nissan Ambersons, which is one of my favourite films ever, despite all its problems. It's a beautiful version, you get some nice extras on it. Definitely worth seeing, definitely worth buying. Even if you've never, never seen it before, it's worth seeing. It's really good. We have Othello, which you get a lot of nice extras for as well. It's I've not seen this for years, but I bought it to rewatch it, but I just haven't got around to it yet, but it's it's definitely on my list. F for Fake, another one of my favourite Orson Welles films. It's a very weird, silly film, but it's, it's really worth seeing because it's like uh, taking the mickey out of his own pompous image and the whole idea about truth and art and all that stuff. He's It shows us Orson Welles with a sense of humour, which is quite nice to see. Okay, now we're on to Wes Anderson. Um, you have seen these ones we saw in my last video. Because there hasn't been any new Wes Anderson films in Criterion. At least over here. But So it's Bottle Rocket. Russian War. The Royal Tenenbaums. And The Life Aquatic. All terrific films. All look gorgeous. It's a really nice set of films. So um, you can... It's, it's just a wonderful set. So... Definitely worth getting, it's really wonderful. We're now going to um, Mitsuguchi with two films from him. One you get, which I've already covered in a video, 
It's a very nice box set with nice documentaries. And you have stacked these quite high, so it's a bit awkward. <laughs> I'm an idiot. You get O'Hara, Life of O'Hara, which I have not watched yet, but I will get around to. So, um, now we have two Howard Hawks, which I think I covered last time, the last Criterion video. His Girl Friday, which I also get front page in this one. And you have Only Angels Have Wings, another terrific film. I adore Howard Hawks movies. They should have more of them in Criterion. You end up, because of his are all over the place, you end up getting some from Eureka, some from Criterion, just everywhere, some from Paramount. It's just a. He's, he's, it's hard to get a lot of his films together because he made films for different studios at different times because he's an independent director, so it, it's hard to kind of get a collection of his films. We've got now we have Roman Polanski with Cul de Sac and his Macbeth. I've not watched Cul de Sac yet, but Macbeth's terrific. It's a bit underrated, but it's not as good as the Awesome Wells Macbeth, but it's still a very good version. Um, we now have some Soderbergh, we have another small Soderbergh, we have Che, part 1 and 2, this was from America, you can't get it over in the UK, and you also get this one, and everything is going fine, which is another one you have to actually get from America, because this is Bowling Grey, Robert's Bowling Grey who died, uh, so this is like all about him, and um, some examples of his work as well, made by Soderbergh, so it's a terrific collection. I still need to watch it, but I've seen little bits and bobs of it, but it's like one I need to really get into. But a lot of the sporting race stuff tend to be interesting. Okay, now we have Tarkovsky, we have Solaris, which is great. And we have one of my favourite films ever, which is Stalker. Stalker is beautiful. Stalker is a great print. It's just one of the greatest films ever made. I don't care if I'm biased, it's just that good. So um, now we have two Gilliam, more Gilliam basically, we have Jabberwocky, and we have the Fisher King. Fisher King has some nice extras, Jabberwocky as well, nice new prints, these are nice collections, if you like Gilliam these are really worth having. Okay, we're going to continue, uh, we've got a few more of just directors focused, we've got Edward Yang with this one, A Brighter Summer Day, and yee. Neither of which I've watched yet, but I will get to. I'm just uh, a bit lazy. We have two Scorsese films, Last Temptation of Christ, which I think is one of his best films, and Age of Innocence, which I also think is one of his best films. So, they've been both chosen for um, Criterion. So, uh, now we're going to take the films by director, only individual films from I don't have a whole series of films from them. So these are numbered all the way up to whatever. We have... Seven Samurai, Kurosawa film. I I've already got this on um, the BFI Blu-ray, but I wanted all the extras in this one, so I bought it from America. I have no shame over that one. That's just the way it goes. Um, we have the Samurai trilogy, which I've not watched. Toshiro Mifune. That's why I bought it. I'll see what it's like. I've heard it's terrific, but I have not watched it, so I need to get there. Tokyo Drifter. I've done a video on this one. It's amazing. It's just great, and it's nice to see in a proper version, because for a long time we just had a terrible DVD copy, which didn't do any favours to all the colour schemes. We have Black Orpheus, which I had last year and I hadn't watched. I still haven't watched. I will get to it. I'm a busy man. Carnival of Souls. Which I've not seen for years. It's a terrific little horror film, but I, I need to be watched. It's nice to see in Criterion. It's nice to see they put money into it. La Ventura by Antonioni. Another terrific films. I need to be watched it still. Uh, we have The Blob. Steve McQueen, one of Steve McQueen's earliest films. I've not I've not watched it yet, but it's nice to have a Criterion. It's sort of like having Godzilla on Criterion as well. It's just, you feel bizarrely proud to have something. It's a bit trashy on Criterion. And The Vanishing, the original Vanishing, not the awful remake. This is the original, the scary one, the terrifying, creepy, ooh, film. There's not many extras in this one, but the extras are nice. So you get into the director, into one of the actors. This explains the tensions on the set and 
how this film was made, but it's definitely worth seeing. It's terrifically made. Now we have La Jetty in San Salido, which I've just done a video on recently, so I'd recommend you go see the video. I think it's one of my better ones. We have uh, Ozu's Tokyo Story, a film which I also have on uh, BFI uh, Blu-ray, but I'm a sucker. I can't resist buying more copies of it. Right, uh, we have Sword of Doom, which I've not watched, which I'm looking forward to seeing. We have Balthazar, a Bresson film, wonderful, I've done a video on it, go see it. Grey Gardens, which I've not watched yet, but it looked interesting, so I will, I'm looking forward to seeing that at some point. I just need to get around to it. We have Metropolitan, a terrific film by Whit Stillman. I'm a big Whit Stillman fan. I need to do some of his films and videos at some point. He's terrific, really witty, very verbal. Um, it's really worth seeing. It's not the most visual film, but it's a really funny film and very moving. We have Overlord, which I haven't watched yet. That my friend Gavin tells me is amazing. All about the war. We have Mishima, which I have seen. I have done a video on. It's stunning. We have Ride with the Devil by Ang Lee. Um, I'm a big fan of this one. It stars Tobey Maguire and it's a bit of uh, the, the American Civil War but seen from the side of the people fighting for the South. So it's a different perspective of a war from the side that lost and uh, who normally portrayed as the villains. And this is a very human story about people who find themselves on the wrong side of a war even though they're decent people and I'm seeing how far the war goes out of control. So it's a very humane look at war from a perspective you don't expect and you see the complexities of war and how they it's just more complicated than you'd imagine we have a blowout Brad Palmer's blowout which we'll do a video on soon um, it's a really nice box it's a really nice collection you get an hour long interview with him and Noah Baumbach so it's really worth seeing okay They're all of this idea, so it's <laughs> taking a lot of effort. The Music Room, Sajid Ray, uh, Solitary Woman has been doing videos on this, so that's why I bought this. So if I hate it, I'll get them. <laughs> I won't, it's okay. <laughs> but, that's, but I've seen a video and spammed me by that. 12 Angry Men, I'm not a big fan of this film, it's a good film, but it's not a great one. But the box, this uh, collection's nice. You get a lot of nice stuff in it, you get it in a good quality. Uh, print so it's nice to have a good quality version of this film. Eating Raoul, which I have not seen yet, but I'm looking forward to it. I heard it's funny and it doesn't look very much like a criterion film, so it's nice to see it. Speaking of which, it's a mad, 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 mad world. I saw this all the time as a kid, but I've not seen it as an adult, so I'm looking forward to seeing this. You also get two, you get two versions of this you get the original cut plus a longer cut. So I'm not sure which one I'll watch first. Happened one night, Frank Capra. I've not seen this for years. I mean, I've had it in DVD for years, so I've upgraded to this, but I haven't watched it since I've upgraded. Day for Night, the Truffaut film, I've not watched it yet. I only bought this just before Christmas, so I haven't had a chance really yet. Speedy, how, um, how Lloyd, yep, it was. For some, for some reason, I honestly thought if I got this wrong, is it Buster Keaton? No, it's how Lloyd. Um, I've not watched it yet. I'm into Buster Keaton now, so I'll have to watch this as well because I'm getting into um, silent films again. I just I, I saw a lot of his films as a kid, but I've not watched them as an adult, so it'd be nice to take a look at it. Burrows, it's a terrific documentary about William Burrows when he's a bit older. Um, nice extras too. Stuff from Jim Jarmusch because he was uh, the sound guy in this film. If you like the beats or Burrows himself, this this is terrific. But it's more for a fan than anything else. I'm a fan, so obviously I'll get it. You've got the Emigrants and the New Land. I have not seen this film yet. I've heard it's terrific. It starts from stars of Mag von Sydow. And I bought it. It's two films in one package. And I've heard it's terrific, so I took the chance on it. So I'll see if it was a good decision or not. The In Laws, a ter terrific, funny, bizarre. Comedy with Peter Falk and Al Narkin. It's it's wonderful. It's really weird. It's strange. 
you have to give it time so you can get into the rhythms of it, but once you get into the rhythms it's hilarious. It's just very weird. And Cat People, the classic Val Luton film, written by Jack Tournier. It's really nice, uh, print of this, you get a, a good documentary about, uh, about Val Luton and all the directors he helped and how his downfall came about. It's a really nice package. If you like old horror, this is a must buy. Okay, we have Punch Drunk Love, which is a terrific film starring Adam Sandler and Emily Watson. Paul Thomas Anderson directed it. It's one of my favourite of his. It's just a really interesting, weird little film that's hard to explain. It's just about these two characters and it's just odd. You're either going to love or hate it. It's that kind of film. We have The Squid and the Whale by Noah Baumbach, which is, who's now just huge at the moment after Marriage Story. This is my favourite of his films that I've seen. It's about divorce, seen through the eyes of the children. Now he's made a film about divorce seen through the eyes of the adults. But, so it's almost like two different versions of the same situation. Um, Squid in the Wheel is terrific. You get some nice extras on it. But it's worth owning just for the film because the film is really good. You have people like Jeff Daniels in it and Jesse Eisenberg and Laura Linney. Terrific actors. If you John Waters here, Multiple Maniacs, I've not watched it yet. I'm a big John Waters fan though, so I will get to it. The Lure, I got in a sale. I've not seen it. I've heard it's good. But I have nothing to say. I took a chance and we'll see if it was a good idea or a bad idea. Philadelphia Story, another terrific screwball. Cary Grant is a lead. Catherine Hepburn, James Stewart. Um, it's a bit sappy at times, but a, lot, but a lot of the supporting actors are terrific and Cary Grant's amazing in this film because he manipulates everyone of having what should be a supporting part but he still walks off with the film. It just shows how good a show off actor he can be while seeming subtle. We have Desert Hearts, the lesbian romance. Uh, I saw this at film school actually. It's been hard to get hold of for years. I started watching as I bought it. But it is, I remember thinking it was a terrific film so I'm looking forward to seeing it again. But it's been a long time because it was one of those films that was very hard to get hold of for a while. I don't know if it was distribution rights or what, but it was difficult to hold of. We have Night Living Dead. So you get um, a new, basically you get the film, been remastered, you get some extras. It's wonderful. Zombies scare the hell out of me so I don't watch it very often. We have Clouseau's Liberate. I have not watched it, I just bought it before Christmas. I can't tell you anything about it, I just bought it. To Sleep With Anger which is Charles Burnett's film starring Danny Glover. This is an amazing film, this is so good. Uh, so about this guy who visits a family in Los, uh, Los Angeles. What's interesting is, it's an all black movie, all the characters are black in America, but that's not the thing, it's a middle class family. It shows you another side of experience in America that you don't get very often, it just treats people as people. So it's, the race doesn't matter, it's just a story with these characters. It's a wonderful film. I highly recommend you just try and see it. It's so good. And Danny Glover makes a really good villain. He seems very happy to get rid of the nice guy image for once. We have Until the End of the World, Vim Vendor's Five Hour Opus. I saw this in the cinema when it was released. Uh, the cut down version, it, even the cut down version blew me away because it was so interesting. The longer version is much better. You get everyone had a chance to breathe. So it's nice to see this been remastered and put out in a two disc Blu-ray. You get some nice extras, but the big thing is the film itself. And it's nice to see Render's actual version actually get a mass release so people can see it. And finally, the Lone Wolf and Cub series. I've done a video on this last year. Go see it. It's a really, I think it's a good video. These are terrific, fun, pulp films. And that's it. That's my Criterion collection updated. Um, I tried not to go on about every film, I tried to just to keep it pacey. Um, obviously I went up buying way too many of them this year as well. I try and keep it under control but there always really so many good films so it's, it's really their fault. Um, that's my excuse anyway. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll be back next week with some collaborations with Solitary Ronin and the Two Idiots videos. So I'll see you then. Right, bye for now.